Thank you. Um, my name is Ben, and I'm here representing uh, the Ligue des Bibliothèques Européennes de Recherche, as you can see there, the Association of European Research Libraries. And essentially, our mission is to um, ensure that in Europe we have the best information infrastructure to allow world-class research. And until probably the beginning of last year, we didn't. We stayed in our ivory towers, and we didn't really engage as this organisation in copyright issues at all. And what I'm going to talk about here is really a story of uh, big data, the rise of the machines, um, and Brussels and, and the European Commission. So, you know, it's not going to be nice. And it's not working. <laughs> okay, it's working very slowly. Yeah. Okay, so um, many of you would have heard the expression data is the new oil and what this means is, you know, there is huge value in data. So you have uh, uh, management consultants like McKinsey producing these huge, huge research, um, research uh, outputs saying that big data is worth billions and billions and billions to the economy. And we have um, huge amounts of data. A year and a half ago they were saying that there was enough data if you put it in the world, if you put it on DVDs, it would reach to the moon and halfway back again. I'm guessing now that actually it reach back, reaches back to the Earth again if you stacked all the DVDs up. Um, and 80% of that data is unstructured data. Here's another slide which basically is saying we have in the research area with research journals um, doubled in just over 11 years, nearly doubled the amount of um, research articles that are there to be um, read. And what this is about is the fact that actually human beings cannot read this huge deluge of data. And the story of big data is really the story of content mining and data mining. So you will recognize some of these companies on the left hand side which are American and on the right hand side uh, we have companies which are mainly British. So two. Um, one is, let's see if this works, yes, Import.io from, from the UK. They do lots of uh, web mining work for companies like Adidas, Apple. Uh, recently, um, my, my, my Prime Minister da David Cameron, not very happy with them because, uh, I don't know if you heard in Poland, but we have to pay the EU one point x billion pounds and that was because we had underestimated the size of uh, the black economy and what import io did with the office of national statistics is improve um the 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 value of um uk prostitution by mining the web and then on on the right hand side there that's a swedish company called recorded future and they mine again social media in particular in english russian chinese and arabic and they predict the future so they sell information to um, governments basically uh, saying we, we predict that on this day the, the, the chance of a riot or a bomb or something going off is, is this percentage. So they're called recorded future and the name sort of says it all. So people have thought and, and kind of come up with ideas for centuries. And um, now we have the rise of the machines. The only way that we can deal, as I said, with this deluge of unstructured data is through content mining. And what that is, is using semantic technologies to mine and extract information. And then based upon that information, you can do you know, lots and lots of things. You can predict the future. You can um, decide actually this kind of advert works well in this market, this kind of advert doesn't work well in this ad advert, or in the science field, you can say, you can, without doing any laboratory analysis at all, you can say, well, actually, this old drug, um, thalidomide, known for causing birth defects in, in the UK in the 1960s, actually is really good for os treating osteoporosis. No laboratory research needed at all. Data collection, so uh, I'm, I'm aware of this study, so something like 10 students spent four months going through 20,000 chemistry theses, extracting molecules from these theses. 50% of these molecules are not known in any uh, molecule database. So again, huge amounts of knowledge that can be extracted. 
Another example, uh, this is uh, Swanson, an information scientist from the 80s, who basically, um, big fan of, of interdisciplinary um, research, i.e. taking research from lots of different disciplines. And he was able to work out that there is a link between the circulate, blood circulatory disease, Raynaud syndrome, and taking fish oil. And this one is web mining. Um, this is from Twitter, some, some researchers in Spain, interestingly used American countries, some reasons I'll go on to, um, to, to, web, to web mine and actually identify different Spanish language dialects. This says that there's lots of money in what I'm talking about. So you might be wondering what on earth reading quickly using computers has got to do with copyright law. Well, the answer is it didn't in the analogue world because copyright didn't regulate reading, thinking and making notes. However, as you know where I'm going with this, in uh, the digital world, obviously copyright and in the European Union database rights regulate copying. So in order to get computers to analyse data, strangely enough, they need to copy. And so, bang, immediately you're in uh, intellectual property rights land, copyright directive and database directive. And we as an organisation are really concerned that we uh, do not have the information infrastructure to support world-class research because in part of copyright law. So we look to countries like the US, Singapore, who have um, exceptions for data mining and text mining, and the UK, and Japan now have specific exceptions to allow content mining. Although in the UK, it's limited to non-commercial research. So if you're those companies that I just showed you, tough, what you're doing is still illegal. So Brussels in three minutes, that's a bit of a challenge. So LIBA and other organisations were locked in a room in Brussels and under the banner of licences for Europe. And we were told to debate text and data mining and we said, oh, great, um, we'd like an exception to copyright law, please. And they said, oh, sorry, that's not on the agenda. This is called licences for Europe. Um, and the answer is that we want more licenses. So we said, are we licensing the internet? And they didn't answer that question, but they said, can you please continue to talk to the journal publishers and the newspaper industry about data mining and licensing? So we were very concerned that they weren't actually engaging with all the relevant stakeholders, very few tech companies there, and that what they were trying to do was systemize a problem and not find a solution. So we wrote a letter to four commissioners, we got one Nobel Prize winner to sign it, we got research councils from the UK, France, Spain and Sweden uh, to co-sign as well as lots of other institutions and basically said if we're not able to discuss flexibilities in intellectual property laws to allow big data to be analysed then we're leaving, so we left. What do we not want? As I said, we do not want an internet. We don't want a license from each and every website uh, publisher. And we want to be able to use material that we've already licensed. And libraries in Europe spend over $5.4 billion a year on content. And essentially, we now spend all that money in order for um, not only humans to read that content, but for our computers to read it too, i.e. to mine. So we believe that the right to read is the right to mine, and we want to be able to um, mine content that we have legal access to that we have already bought, or we have legal access to on the internet. And for that, we need copyright reform. Oops, let's go back. Um, and we either want a specific exception in the EU to allow tax mining for commercial and non-commercial purposes, because the knowledge transfer agenda in universities is very important. Universities might find the cure for cancer, but it will be a pharmaceutical company that takes that to market. So the knowledge transfer in this context is really important, which is why we want an exception to allow commercial and non-commercial content mining or a reinterpretation of EU law that actually this sits outside of copyright law. because. When copyright law 300 years ago was invented, it was about the printing press. And as you can imagine, 
it's been stretched and stretched and stretched and um, essentially we have cop copyright law now regulating something that it was clearly never designed for. So those are um, some, Im uh, this is some contact details and if anybody is interested in working with us on, on these issues at a policy level, I'd be very interested to hear from you. Thank you.